What's good, YouTube family? Happy New Year, and God bless every single one of you. Y'all, I don't really talk about my goals like that. I just like to keep them personal, you know what I'm saying? But I'm going to let y'all in on one of my goals. One of my goals for this year is to have 100,000 plus subscribers by the end of this year. I need y'all help in doing that. So make sure that y'all like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're already subscribed and you're already doing all those things, make sure that y'all please share my videos with other people. All right, y'all, so for this intro, though, I got a little story. But all right, y'all, other than that, I got a little story that I want to tell y'all for this intro. Last night, I was writing what I'm grateful for. It was last night, but it was today, right? So it was past 12. It was January 1st, 2023. I wrote down in my phone the first words that I said this year and the first sentence I said this year. Because this God is so powerful and it was just so good of a word and good of a message that, like, it just stuck with me. So I was like, man, I don't want to forget this. I got to write this down. So I did that. Then I was writing my journal because I have a journal that I write to God about things that I'm grateful for for that day. And in the journal last night, I wrote, I'm grateful for 2 Corinthians 5, 17, which says, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So today when I got on my phone to read the verse of the day, the verse of the day was 2 Corinthians 5, 17. It's just like, man, God is so good. And it's like, we need to pay attention to things like that when God's speaking to us. So and doing that, y'all, the reason I'm telling y'all this is because that's what the message is going to be about today. I pray this year is full of more God, more life, and more blessings for every single one of us. And I hope that every single one of y'all have a great year. I appreciate every single one of y'all and all the love and support that y'all continue to give me. Let's get this channel to 100,000 plus by the end of the year. Another thing I want to touch on is make sure that y'all notification button turn on so you get notified when I post or when I go live, anything like that. And I plan on going live a lot more, especially in the shop. So make sure that y'all got your notification bell turned on. Something else I got to inform y'all on is my online course. I plan on having my online course ready and launched by the end of this month, by the end of January. So make sure that y'all stay tuned for that. And I promise you I'm over delivering it. And then y'all, I got to say this. I'm humble at Jesus' feet. Without Jesus, I'm nothing but a filthy rag inside the side of God and I can't do anything. With Jesus, I am the righteousness of God, and I can do all things. And I surrender and I submit myself and I am a life to God. My life is God's, and my life is lived for him. To say don't be all he called me to say don't be. To glorify him in his name. To spread the gospel and to make him in his name known. All the power going on, praise be to God. I love y'all, and I hope y'all enjoyed this video. God bless. What's good, YouTube family? Thank y'all for tuning back into another video. Make sure that y'all like, comment, subscribe, and watch for the whole thing. This helps me because it puts me more in YouTube's Damn, algorithm. Heavy. It helps me to continue to grow and to reach more people so I can help more people by using the gifts and abilities God has given me to glorify Him in His name and to spread the gospel and to make Him and His name known. So to get into the cut, before I pick up any clipper or trimmer, I want to prep the hair. So to prep the hair, I want to comb the hair in the direction that the client brushes his hair. And after I do that, I want to take a number one guard and I'm going to cut with the grain just like we combed in the direction the client brushes his hair, we're going to cut in the direction the client brushes his hair. And when you're doing that preparation, make sure that you look for any imperfections in the head. So make sure that you look for how the crown is growing and make sure that you look for any light spots, see if they have any calyx, anything like that. Just make sure that when you're doing the preparation for the haircut, that you're paying attention to all those factors. And then just be very consistent when you're cutting the hair down. And go over multiple times and comb through it after like cut it down and then comb through it to lift the hair up off the scalp and also the reason that you comb in the beginning and not brush is because brushing lays the hair flat comb and lifts the hair off the scalp which is going to help you to give a more even cut and the most even cut possible so y'all can see i just go over everything multiple times and i'm making sure i'm being consistent in the back i put my guideline pretty much straight across and then make sure it's I go ahead and I clear the area out make sure that everything your guidelines are nice clean and even because the guideline is like the foundation of the haircut and it's going to play a big factor in determining how clean and even of a haircut that you can give for the side we're doing a high taper so I bought them out from the bottom of the vertical bar to the top of his ear once again uh, to be a more efficient barber y'all you can go ahead and clear the hair off the cheek if uh you know if they just have chin hair or whatever go ahead and clear that hair while you're there anyway all right so to get into the fading process y'all i'm gonna start by setting my guideline in 
like three quarters of an inch and to set my guideline in initially i'm gonna flick out as you see in the first thing i was doing after i flicked out and have my guideline established i'm gonna lay my blade flat and go to the top of the guideline next i'm gonna close my lever halfway and go halfway up the guideline after that i'm gonna close my lever just a little bit more and i'm gonna tap the bottom line and soften it up then i'm gonna close my lever all the way tap the bottom line and take it out completely and i believe that before you do any clip over comb or before you put a guard on just the the fade from the blade open to the blade closed is the most important part of the fade it's like the foundation of the fade and it's going to play a big factor in determining how clean even of a fade that you can get so make sure that you take your time with that since we cut his hair down with the number one close this one and a half should go right up into that so i'm just going here and clear myself a nice foundation to be able to fade into now I have a number one guard on with the blade open. And I'm going right up under where we left off with that one and a half. And then I'm going to close my lever. And every time I close my lever, Damn, I'm going to move heavy. down a little bit on this fade. So now I have all the way closed and I'm tapping that bottom line. I know it's not going to take it out completely, but it's going to soften it up for me to be able to come in with my zero guard and take the line out completely. Okay, well, I guess I didn't use the zero guard. Instead, I just went clipper over comb. So with the clipper over comb, this side of the comb is like using a one and a half guard. The big side of the comb is, and the little side of the comb is like using a 0.5 guard or a zero guard or a half guard, whichever one you call it. And y'all can see, I'm just going for certain spots. And at this point of the fade, I'm just doing detail work. And by detail work, I mean lever play. So open and closing my lever or my blade when need be and corner work using the last couple of teeth of my blade or the corner of my blade to pinpoint dark spots bring them to the light and make the fade as smooth as possible if you're ever confused like watching clip over comb or anything like that just um pay attention to like what side of the comb i'm using where i'm at in the fade if my lever is open or closed you know what yeah just pay attention to things like that and it should help a lot all right y'all so my message for today First of all, I'm going to give y'all a scripture, and then I'm going to tell y'all, like, a story, a metaphor. The scripture is 2 Corinthians 5.17. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So, make sure that with that newness of life that's provided in Christ Jesus, make sure that you're living in that newness of life that Jesus Christ provided for us all on the cross. I try to do the metaphor, y'all, and I just don't got enough time to go in detail with my story. So I'm going to just continue to go off 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Just make sure that with the newness of life that Jesus has provided for us on the cross, that you're living in it. And what I mean by that is take every day serious. Like every single day of your life matters and every single day is valuable. Life and time are so precious, y'all. Do not waste any of your life or any of your time. Don't waste any of your time, any of your life on anything that isn't going to help you to grow closer to God and to say to him be more better for him and make sure that you're doing something to fulfill the calling that God has for you each and every day I don't always explain the back of the haircut but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do it for this one so with the back it's pretty much the same thing as the side except for you're going to have bigger guidelines because you're working with a bigger surface area so since you have more room to work you make your guideline bigger so it's the same thing I start with my blade open or my lever open to set my guideline in instead of doing it like half an inch or three quarters of an inch i do it like a full inch and make sure to say like if you just watch how i turn my clipper sideways that's because this hair is growing that way you want to make sure when you're doing a fade you're always cutting against the grain With the back for tapers y'all, I like to do one side and then the other. Like I do them both at the same time as you can see before I move on to another um, guard or whatever. But I like to do one side and the other. I feel like it just helps me to stay more neat and organized. Now I have a Babeless Low Pro FX Clipper with the number one guard on. And I'm just going right up under his bump. You don't want to take the fade and stretch the fade so high that you take it above the bump in her head because then it, it's just going to look like patchy in, in that spot. 
because it's super dense plus like the bump you know you just want to keep the fade up under that so make sure that y'all focus on doing that yeah it's also gonna be easier for you i promise you that but yeah i'm just going open halfway and closed i'm going open right up under the bump in his head and then i'm going to close my lever every time i close my lever i'm going to move down so i'm going to close my lever halfway and move a little bit down on the fade then i'm going to close my lever all the way and i'm going to tap that bottom line now, i know it's not going to take it out completely but it's going to soften it up for me able to come in with my zero guard and take it out completely instead of using a zero guard i guess i just grabbed the anus masters and the reason that I could do this or you could do this is because the Anis Masters blade opens a lot bigger than the Babyless Low Pros and, and the blade is just thicker. So I was just doing detail work with that. Right now, I'm just prepping the hair to be able to put some product in it. You do that because it just gets all the loose hairs out. So now I'm just throw some product in there. This is just some mousse. making sure that I brush everything or you know just do everything forward now I'm gonna brush everything forward in the pattern and the direction that the client brushes his hair making sure that I you know evenly spread the product through the client's hair y'all see the gloves on the hat master man rest that was rest yes all right, so I'm gonna throw the do rag on now. Usually, I like to put the do rag on and put them under, like you know, the dryer. But I, I, I didn't have time this day. He had a meeting, uh, so we just had to do it like this because he had to get out the shop at a certain time. I'm cutting his chin hair down with the one and a half guard. That's just a nice, clean guard uh, for somebody who has chin hair and don't want it like sticking up off their face too much. The one and a half is a perfect, clean guard for that. Just make sure that you shape the chin hair like even on both sides. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tap his mustache in. I'm gonna hit the top of it. Then I'll go ahead and I'll line above his lip. Make sure like you just get a client what they want, you know? All right, so since his hair is laid now, now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna prep for the lineup. So I'm taking my brush. And I'm gonna comb the hairs forward. Then I'm gonna throw some holding spray in. This is Tresemme Volume 5. I'm gonna put it on the next strip. And I'm gonna wipe everything forward how I want it to lay for the lineup. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna blow dry with cold air. Y'all, yeah, I'm gonna go way more in detail on my haircuts in the online academy. Make sure that y'all register for that when it comes up. It's coming in January. I'm, I, I hope to have it up. Uh, I hope to have it launched by January. I right, also for the ear lineups. I like to tap in my slant. You do not have to push ear lineups back to make them crispy. You don't have to push no lineup back to make it crispy. So make sure that you you know just have good preparation and keep everything natural and crispy as natural as possible and crispy as possible. So. I tap in my slant, I go to the top of the ear, then I I convert to using the last couple of teeth of my blade or the corner of my blade to make the arch shape around the ear. Man, y'all see his lineup, it's kind of difficult, uh, it's kind of different. So, you know, I like to work to the higher side first when it comes to lineup. So his left side, or actually it's his right side, our left side, looking at it uh, from straight ahead is... A little higher you know so i just work for that first but i like to start in the middle and work my way to the side once the front meets the side then i tap in the vertical bar make sure that you solidify your lineups by solidifying your lineup i mean put your first initial lineup in comb any hairs through and then cut all the overhanging hairs so there aren't any this is gonna set you apart as a barber because your cuts is gonna last way longer it's gonna set you apart as a it's gonna set you apart as a barber as far as the cutting aspect of barbering. So I just went ahead and I threw some enhancements in. I did Kiss Express first. Now I'm just throwing some fibers on top of it. 
fibers for me personally i like to put the fibers in then i'll comb through them just uh you know to lighten them up a little bit because i when i do a hand swiss i like to make it look as natural as possible but i still want to look enhanced but i don't want it to be like too crazy you know and then make sure that when you're lining up your enhancements that you uh line them up in the line that you've already have created like don't push the line up back line the enhancements up line them up at the line you already had created so now i'm just using my crispy lines razor and holding it at a 45 degree angle stretching the skin and you know putting that last finishing crispiness on the on the cut right here i'm just you know getting these loose hairs that's on top of the cut and i'm low-key trying to get a thumbnail Alright y'all, if you were able to sit through this video with me, I truly appreciate y'all. If you came because you like watching barber videos because they're satisfying, I hope this video satisfied you. If you came to learn something, I hope you learned something. Take something from my game, apply it to yours, and advance in your career, and your craft, and your life. And if you came for the message, I hope it reached you, and touched your heart, your soul, your mind, and your body. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. You know, and share my channel with your friends. Thank you for tuning to another video. Thank y'all for tuning to the late show. I hope to see you back on the next video. May God bless.